Note taking is a waste of time. Sleep deprivation is supposedly bad for you, yet it is used for therapy. Now, flashcards are the best way to learn, but most experts in a field don't use flashcards. Learning styles are what teachers use to help us learn, but we don't actually have a best learning style. Most of learning, if not all of learning, comes from processing information and then telling stories and creating narratives around the information that we've processed. I know cognitive load theory is a thing, but I don't know much about it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to research it and then create narratives and stories around what I've found. I use Google Scholar to find a couple of papers and then put those into a collection in ResearchRabbit, which is where I use the earlier work, later work, and similar work suggestions to then find other papers I'm then going to read and learn about. So adding a little bit of context on what I said at the beginning of the video, note-taking is a waste of time if you're not doing something with them. So this is my note-taking aspect, which if you want to learn more about I've done a video on previously but now I'm going to take those notes and actually create something from them so I'm going to make a story make a narrative from the notes that I've taken to help educate my actions and behaviors when I do go out into the real world a quick orientation for those that aren't familiar with obsidian I have some starred pages here which are pages that I'm currently working on I'm working on my own obsidian theme which you can see right here and I'm working on cognitive load theory which is what I'm going to research so I'm going to click that and bring that up this is my processing note that I will be going through and and then I have a couple of PDFs that I still need to read through and then a couple that I have actually gone through. This one I will probably bring into here. So I'm going to collect all of those notes and create a narrative around all of the points in here, all of the points in here and bring it together. So let's get to it. Before I can make anything from the notes that I've taken, from academic papers and articles and journals and lectures and things like that, I need to actually understand the notes that I've taken, and a lot of the time that is just putting the notes into plain language, sometimes using Google Define, a lot of the time just rephrasing or rewording whatever the sentence or paragraph is. If they are just my notes and not from academic papers, obviously I don't need to do that, but I think this is a perfect example of what I end up doing when I'm trying to understand most of these papers. So this is a quote, complex visuals are understood more efficiently when explanatory words are presented in an audio modality than when presented in a written modality. In other words, audio communication is better than written communication when explaining complex visuals. I don't understand why they can't just say it like that in the first place. Small rant over, back to the time lapse. While I'm going through these notes, I'm going through in my head if it's a thought or idea or something that's going to be individual on its own. So maybe there's going to be a couple of points that come up in other articles, other papers, or maybe in future, or maybe even notes I've already taken. And if they are individual notes or individual points that could be their own note, what I do is I make the page then and there, just dump all those points in there so I know it can be a node, a blue node in my graph for me to edit later on. And if I get any questions while I'm going through all of these points, I will add those to my questions page, which you'll see towards the end of the time lapse. So to bring you back in as sort of like a check mark point, we've got a note that has a story and narrative starting to form. We've got an image at the bottom explaining roughly what this information processing model is, what cognitive load theory is. Now we've still got highlighted references in here because these are references, these are papers that I haven't read, I don't know about, but they were used in the paper I did read. So I know these are papers I want to go and find, put into Research Rabbit, then bring into Obsidian, read through, and then have them as actual capture note quotes like these two here and you can see they're listed down the bottom now this is actually the same paper it's just been referenced twice because this note is still processing you can see I still have that big paper to go through that's got like 40 pages worth of stuff if we go into the outline yeah we've got uh, 38 pages worth of, of notes to bring in and you can see we've got different points in here that have actually managed to connect some of the thoughts I already had so various mediums of communication was a note I'd already made all of these are linked with other things that I've gone through other notes other ideas other thoughts that I've gone through in previous videos and just in in previous thoughts in general so I'm starting to link cognitive load theory with other ideas other thoughts I have our learning is a massive note that I I have linked to so many things that is a, a processing note that I will do some point in the future with, but I will get there and we have a couple of different effects that have been brought up now this reversal effect here was actually brought up in a podcast I listened to a while back let's have a look see when that was uh, yeah so that was the sixth and that was what three almost four months ago now but that's when I first came across this effect and I just linked straight to that effect because as soon as I saw it I thought oh I've seen that before I just linked to it and now I have all of those reference points 
in here, which is really nice. When I come into Obsidian, you can see down here, we've got a graph view. Now, all of these blue dots are different processing notes. And as we go through, some of them will turn into orange notes. So they are working notes. They are notes that I have summarized. I've actually put through in, into places. Uh, but these blue notes are notes that I know I need to work on. So once this note has been fleshed out and there is a narrative in there, there isn't currently because cognitive architecture is in here and I assume it's got something to do with cognitive low theory, I don't really know yet because I haven't gone and had a look at this reference. But when this note is fleshed out and has a narrative, I can then go and have a look at these other blue notes and see what narratives they then shape. And what will then happen is I will then bring all of that story into a book, which I'll go through later on in the video. So let's get back to it. I mentioned earlier that some of my notes are written by me, but other notes are actually notes I've taken from articles, from academic papers, and those notes a lot of the time are copied. So what I do is I go through the actual article, I have the PDF, I go through, I highlight it using Adobe Acrobat, then I take those notes and I put those notes into my Obsidian, which you can see on screen right now, and they are basically copied sections of the paper because the paper is normally 7, 8, 9, 10, 15, 30 pages long. And I'm just going to take these sections that I want. And the reason I take sections and I don't reword it straight away is a lot of the time when I reword it, not having read the whole paper, I don't fully understand the context of the paragraph or from the sentence. So I actually found that if I just copy the sentences and paragraphs over and then use those and then reword them, recontextualize them afterwards, I actually understand the paragraph or the sentence better. Status update. I've gone through the entire paper. You can see there is the point and there is all the notes that I've made from it or all the notes that it's currently linked in. That will probably be more as we move forwards. But you can see it's now out of our file explorer. So there is no more work I need to do to that specific note. Now it's a case of actually putting the points into sentences that make sense. As we scroll down, you've got the divider separating the work that we've done. So this is the work we've done beforehand. Still need to process it a little bit. And then we have all of the other points from that paper. Loads of stuff and what I'm going to do is go through this and make these points actually make sense and as I was going through this there are actually quite a few different effects that appeared so I just made them into notes you can see there they are and I will probably make a note saying cognitive load effects and then put all of those pages in there so I can then follow down that path that story that journey uh, with all of the different effects that cognitive load can have so what I'm going to do is try and make this into something a little bit more legible Look at that, snap of the fingers and everything's done. I wish it was that quick. No, uh, I've done lots and lots of work on this. And as you can see, we've got some uh, other orange dots in our graph over here. Lots of the points that I had, so this is the entire page now. Lots of the points I had are now inside other pages, creating their own narratives, creating their own stories. So if I was to go into any of these orange pages, a lot of them have their own stories, their own pages that look just like this, which I'll go through in a second. But as I look at the page, you can see we've got CLT as an alias, because that's what I'm using in other pages like the biological knowledge page, the redundancy effect page, and the exploration page. And this exploration page is actually kind of like a question page. It's an, an update page. I'll open it very quickly. And you can see this page has just got all of the different questions I have in lots of different areas. And while I was going through making notes, there were some questions that kept coming up. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to put that in my exploration page. You can see how is sport education affected by cognitive load theory. So CLT, that was a question that came up. And it's something I may look to explore later on down the line but instead of diving down that rabbit hole when I thought about the question I put it in the exploration page and I will probably do a, an audio journal about it at some point. Now I'm not going to read through this whole page if you want to pause it and read through it you can but cognitive load is something that's obviously important in cognitive load theory. Cognitive overload is then a topic that came up that then relates to level of performance. And then you can see where the links start to go. So level of performance actually relates to my performance page, which you can see performance is, and then there is my massive performance page. So I'm now linking cognitive load theory with cognitive overload to performance. So that train of thought is now been made there. Then we've got intrinsic cognitive load, these different points I still need to go through. This is actually still a processing page. So I've still got lots of work to do. So this page is going to be one of the blue dots down here. Epigenetics was something that was mentioned in the article. So I did a very quick research dive on what it was. And it's something I may explore later on in the future, but it's not something I'm that interested at the moment. Cognitive load related effects. You can see this is where I put all of those effects. So I actually grabbed an image from the article. I put it in there. You can see there's the reference, there's the article, and then I have all the other effects in here. So this is the redundancy effect. Need to go and make that page. Then we have the expertise reversal effect. That's the effect that I found, uh, when was it, like the 6th? Uh, yeah, in June. So there's that, there's that, 
That is where that effect uh, ended up. And then we've got the imagination effect, the worked example effect, all the other effects that are related to cognitive load theory are now in this one page. So if I want to look at cognitive load related effects, I can just go straight to that page rather than having to go to cognitive load theory and then look for the relevant effect. It's now all here. All of these again having their own bounce off points. Communication style affects cognitive load. It's a page that I made. It's a statement I made. It wasn't actually said in the paper that there were loads of paragraphs talking about these different things and verbal communication is better than written communication when explaining complex visuals. You can, you may remember that earlier I actually spoke about that and that is where it ended up. This is where I put it because cognitive load is affected by various mediums of communication. Now, I actually know that other mediums of communication are do impact how you, how you consume information and how information is put across. So I know there's going to be more stuff put in here at a later date, but not right now. And that's what I've done to this page. I've just condensed different ideas into notes, those small notes, and then each of those notes then goes off into different directions, sometimes linking to notes I already have, sometimes going to completely new notes that I needed to do a little bit of research on. Now for those papers I still need to read, you can see they're still down here, they're still here in, in the footnotes, but what I've actually done is when I come into the text, I still have my footnotes, so this is my catch a note footnote reference, that's the green dot in here, that's the actual paper I've read, but this footnote here, all of this is referenced in this footnote here. So I know, okay, these are the articles I need to look at for this specific thing. And the same with this footnote and this footnote. What this means is it keeps the page clean. So it's very easy to see it, very easy to understand, but I can still jump to all of those papers and go, oh, I need to have a look at that. And then I can turn it into a green dot when I go and read it. Now that I've summarized this note, I'm going to go into this graph, have a look for some blue dots. So let's go for this one. And what I'm going to do is now do the exact same thing. Try and make this a comprehensive explanation of whatever this topic is, which we've almost done in this page. But when we come into here, you can see loads of blue dots. So let's go into the blue dots and do the same thing. So let's go into this one and this page I still need to work on. So I'm going to flesh out this page, then go back. So coming back, I'm going to work on most of these dots until most of them are orange, until either I get bored, get frustrated, or I feel like I have a good understanding of all the different areas and topics that's going on, and then I'm going to put it in my book. And I'll come back to you when I've done that. Jump cuts are lovely when watching the video, but there's actually loads of work that's gone on, trust me. So when I have a look at all of these notes, this is the note that I was currently on, you can see loads of orange dots, there's no actual uh, blue dots in here, and what I've done is I've pinned this. Let's have a look at cognitive load related effects. Let's bring this into the preview mode, we can see there are all the different effects and if we look down here most of these are orange we've got a couple of blue dots the expertise reversal effect got loads of notes still in there to go through and then we've got our learning and that's a big page that's going to take weeks of probably uh, of, of processing but we've got all of these effects in here and we can see cognitive load if I go into cognitive load again we've got another page lots of orange dots and we've got some that are our backlinks which are over here so I can go into those or I can just click through the page. So let's go to cognitive overload. And this is what I've now done with most of the pages. You can see very few blue dots. And what I'm going to do is go through these pages and actually add them into my book, which I will go to now. So my book is essentially my note collection, my working note collection, but it has all of the summaries in here. So if I click on this page, you can see we've got note taking, consuming information, processing information, sharing information, etc. And these are all the different points that I have gone through. I've summarized and I have notes on. And what I can do is I can go through very easily very quickly go through the different sections of note taking so if I want to explore what note taking is to me most people take transient notes and you can see all of my thinking goes down this this rabbit hole and if I want to bring up a narrative or I want to go through and find something I just come to my book and I can read through I can read through this page as if it was a book or I could go through and just read through all of the notes that I've making on I've made, I've made on specific things. So sleep deprivation is something I explored recently. Sleep deprivation can't kill you. How can it not kill you? And then FFI and then going through in there. So all of the notes I've made in my obsidian, in my note collection, all come back to this one page. You could call this a structure note, a map of content, a, a master note, a book, whatever you want to call it. I'm calling it a book because there are going to be chapters. You can see sleep is a chapter. Note taking is a chapter. And there's going to be different chapters in this page. And it's going to get pretty big. So what I'm going to do now is summarize cognitive load, cognitive load theory theory in my book. It may not look like much, but these three lines summarize all of the information that I've processed in cognitive load theory and learning, looking at biological knowledge, what working memory is, long-term memory is, learning environments, element interactivity, what that is, cognitive load, what that is, those different elements of cognitive load, how all of those different elements can affect cognitive load and therefore cognitive overload. So all of the questions that I did have have been answered and they are down in these pages, but I don't need to see all of the answers to those questions when I'm having an overview of what learning and cognitive load impacting learning 
means. Now, if you want to have a read through any of my notes or read through the book, you can do. I will leave a link in the description below for you to have a look through. But until then, get off YouTube and do something productive with your time instead.